Well, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the regular meeting of the Orange County School Board. Before we begin, let me turn um, the podium, or the, I'm sorry, the table over to Vice Chair, Member Gould, so that she can, um, one, lead us in a moment of silence um, and speak to a very tragic issue that is on the hearts and minds of um, many of our students and families and faculty here in Orange County. Uh, today we mourn a very tragic loss of a student who found no way to live as of this morning and took his own life. He was a well-loved um, and very active member of his school community and that community is uh, rallying around each other and the family and I hope that you will keep um, the students of Windermere High, this young man and his family, in your thoughts and prayers as we take this moment of silence. Amen. And if Dr. Gordon would lead us in the pledge. Please stand for the pledge. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, before we begin with our official business this evening, um, let me mention that um, in the wake of the tragedy in our West Orange, our Windermere High School community, um, both the Vice Chair and I will be leaving the meeting to join um, the families and friends of the student. And so I want to ask the board, we have um, no official policy for how we handle the meetings when both the Chair and Vice Chair are out. but as has been our practice um, to divert to the immediate past vice chair, which in this case is the very capable Dr. Gordon. So I wanna ask the board if there's a motion to appoint our immediate past chair, uh, vice chair, Dr. Gordon to the position of chair during this meeting. So moved, motion, and we have a second, and we have a second from Member Lopez. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries, then I will turn the, um, um, I'm so sorry. I'm going to turn the gavel over to the vice chair, although she will not need it because you all are a wonderful um, group. I am sorry that we're going to miss this meeting. Um, we have many, many wonderful people to celebrate here today, and I want you to know that both I and the vice chair um, will be following up and watching this meeting, and um, we applaud you for the wonderful things that you're doing. God bless. First of all, good evening to everyone, good evening. I know they left on a very solemn note, but I think the loss of any loved one or any student or any child is like, if they're, they're our family, it's OCPS family. But there's good news and then there's sad news. But we wanna keep it joyful and just pray for the family and give them the love. And if you know the family, some of you do know them, just make sure that you stick with them when all of this had pretty much settled. So again, we said good evening and welcome to the Orange County Board. This is our regularly scheduled meeting. It's Tuesday, January the 14th, and we have recognitions that will be coming up. But tonight, we are going to be recognizing a group of employees who are in the inaugural cohort. They have earned their master's degree or either their certification in educational leadership. And it's through a partnership OCPS has with the University of Central Florida. And we are excited about that tonight. 
So joining us tonight to tell us more about this wonderful partnership and to introduce our graduates is Patty Brown Painter with our professional learning department. And we welcome you, Ms. Painter, to the podium. And it's yours. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Gordon, school board members, Dr. Jenkins, and staff. Thank you for recognizing this inaugural group of students who completed their studies as part of a partnership between Orange County Public Schools and the University of Central Florida. As part of the partnership for this graduate study cohort, all classes were scheduled on site in the evenings at the Ronald Blocker Educational Leadership Center or the Orlando campus of Orange Technical College. This saves students drive time, tolls, and parking fees. All face-to-face -face classes were scheduled as a cohort, which encouraged collaboration and learning together as a close-knit group. Participants of the cohort completed their internship with a hand-selected OCPS principal from whom they could learn leadership skills outside of their assigned school or department. Additionally, each participant received 10 temporary duty days to use toward completion of their internship. While we believe the support of the district to these cohort students facilitated their accomplishment, it is also important to note that the financial responsibility of this graduate work was shouldered by the students themselves. This also speaks to their level of commitment and achievement. At this time, I would like to introduce to you the program coordinator for the Orange County Public Schools, University of Central Florida, Masters in Education cohort, Dr. Tom Vitale, to share some student achievement data with you. So thank you and, and good evening. I'm, I'm happy to be here. I really have, uh, I'll, be, I'll be brief, a cu couple things to say. First of all, um, I'm here just to uh, represent uh, this group. They were, a, they were a really great group. Some of the achievement data, all these folks had to take and pass the Feely to be able to get certified as part of uh, this degree program. Uh, the, the first and second time pass rate for this group was in excess of 94%. Um, just to give you some some ballpark on that for the state first time pass rates are in the low 60 percent when you factor in first and second time pass rate that bumps up to the low 70s and so for this group you know they were they were around 94 percent so um, that speaks to the, the the caliber and the quality of students that we had in this group um, in inaugural group you guys set the bar really high for the group coming behind you so uh, congratulations to you and then I would also like to recognize um, Patty and her team um, from a UCF perspective coordinator perspective we really couldn't have asked for better partners um, these guys were were there and a, and a part of this partnership the whole time so um, so from UCF really thank you very much we appreciate um, and we're really looking forward to our our second group and the last thing for you guys the doctoral program deadline for admission is May 1st so and then so I'll uh, turn this back over to Patty so she can recognize these folks individually Thanks. and Tom was kind to recognize me but Susan Abbey has been with us since the very beginning and she's the executive director for professional learning um, this group began their classes in January 2018 and completed their program requirements to graduate December 13th, 2019. Other information to note, 13 earned a master's degree, two earned a specialist degree, two already had uh, gra uh, graduate degrees and earned their certification in educational leadership through the modified core. All passed the Florida Educational Leadership Exam, which is also required for the certification. This cohort represents many facets in Orange County Public Schools of instruction and instructional support within our district. Classroom teachers, school-based resource teachers and coaches, staffing specialists, as well as district program specialists, and we have a school psychologist represented as well. We are excited to learn the ways in which their leadership will positively impact students, teachers, and families in our district. We are pleased to present to you the inaugural group of Orange County Public Schools, University of Central Florida cohort graduate students who have completed a master's specialist or modified core in educational leadership. When I call your name, if you would stand up to be recognized by the school board. Nicolette Allen. Danielle Kane. Altamont Coley. 
Deborah Isso. Amanda Jones. <laughs> Kathleen Kaunda. Hey. Mark Lemon. <laughs> Gabriella McDonald. <laughs> Justin McDonald. <laughs> Catherine Mahoney. No, no, honey, you Nicole Matthews. <laughs> Gabriella McConnell. <laughs> Brittany Mills. <laughs> Dana Rowe. <laughs> Rachel Scrimshire. <laughs> Jessica Vasilison. Wow, that was a lot of excitement going by there, I'll tell you. I, I didn't see the photographer. What happened to our photographer? Okay, I'll leave it alone. <laughs> I know I want to say one thing um, before I talk to Dr. Um, Abby and to um, Dr. Painter. I really want to thank Dr. Vitale. Will you stand again, please? That's a lot of work. A lot of work. Now, you have a lot of UCF people. But some of us are FTU. You, they don't know about that. That's, that's, we, that means we're the beginning of it all. But we just thank you so very much for your hard work and getting them ready. And I heard you say one good thing. You said, now get ready for your doctorate. <laughs> okay, so anyway. I mean, you know, and I just think that that's <coughs> wonderful. Don't stop there. The more you get, the more you will be able to pass on to the children and the adults that you will be working with and that you're going to serve. It is a rewarding position and you're going to love it. So we want to thank Dr. Patty, okay, and thank you for all of the support that you and Dr. Abby have done throughout the years in providing our employees with great education and making them better. And to all of the wonderful graduates, we as an entire board, and on behalf of Dr. Jenkins, the superintendent, who is a UCF Knight, all right, three times UCF Knight. Not all of us have that. Go Knights. See, I knew it. <laughs> I needed to see if they knew the response. Yeah, y'all supposed to respond there. <laughs> Charge on. Charge on. <laughs> right, charge on. But we would like each of you to come. Well, you were supposed to come forward and get the picture, but I did not see our photographer, so um, um, we, we might, we'll work out something. We'll work something out. Just send us all your pictures, and we'll have Scott. Michelle Hogan. <laughs> Scott. Okay, Scott, will you do Scott a favor? Scott Howitt will take one with his phone. Okay, will you do a favor? Will oh, you wait, just stand? Go. Will you all just stand right where you are? No, I like, you want him to come back up? What is your desire? What is your pleasure? <laughs> oh, come on out. This is an honor. You don't get to do okay. this but once in a lifetime. Okay? <laughs> we are very proud of you. You need this picture. <laughs> yeah, Dr. By Kelly, um, Dr. Abby, Patty, uh, Painter. Yeah, she was going to me. She married Mr. Payton. <laughs> yeah, this is good stuff right. for Scott. Yeah, thank you. How do we look, Scott? <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to be sharing up here this evening. We thank you all so very much. We are so proud of you. I cannot thank. It, it, this part of Dr. Um, Bridget Williams' program also? Oh, she's not in this one. This is a different one. 
I, I am just so elated. This was one of the main goals of this board, and we didn't know how Dr. Jenkins was going to really roll this thing out, but she did it. And just to get so many of the colleges and universities involved in this program of growing, we call it growing our own, and, and it, it is just amazing because if you bloom, you're going to make sure somebody else is planted, and you're going to make sure that they bloom. And that's the way her staff work with all of us to make sure all of us move forward. At this time, we're going to ask, um, I'm going to ask Dr. Karen Castadental to help share with me these proclamations. We have several, and we want you to listen to them because they're all very important. All right. Thank you, Dr. Gordon. Um, first, we, ha we have three proclamations, and the first one is Celebrate Literacy Week. So I would like to welcome Rob Bixler to the mic, and then Ms. Taylor, and they have a special guest with them today. Good evening, Dr. Gordon, board members, Superintendent Jenkins. I have the distinct honor of reading the proclamation for Celebrate Literacy Week, and I do have a few special guests who like to help us rein in and celebrate, I should say, cel uh, Celebrate Literacy Week. Whereas the week of January 22nd through January 31st, 2020, is, is designated by the Florida Department of Education as Celebrate Literacy Week in the state of Florida. And whereas a mission of the public schools is to prepare all students for the 21st century through becoming literate thinkers, writers, and readers in all facets of life, and whereas Orange County Public Schools and the superintendent have an intense focus on student achievement, and whereas literacy prepares students to become independent readers and thinkers who can conduct, who can construct and apply knowledge and whereas literacy enables students to become productive adults who can compete globally and contribute positively, positively to society, now, now therefore be it resolved that Orange County Public Schools does here proclaim January 27th through January 31st, 2020 as Celebrate Literacy Week. Mm -hmm. And to help us celebrate, I was able, had a, a wonderful visit to Orlando Ace and got the chance to uh, visit and meet one of our hero teachers, Christine Taylor, for, in first grade. And she has a special guest who will read a poem for us about the letter A from Darren Sardelli. Miss Taylor, just come up and, and share your guest. Well, thank you so much for that introduction. And good evening to all the board members, Dr. Jenkins and Dr. Gordon. All I have to say, I'll let it speak for itself. I'm honored to be a retired teacher who returned twice. I've taught about 50 years total. Education is a passion for me. And I'll let her speak for education. Good evening, my name is Anaya Junti, and I will be, I, I am in Ms. Taylor's first grade class and I will be reading the letter A. The letter A, the letter A is awesome. It simply is the best. Without an A, you could not get an A plus on a test. You never seen an acrobat or in an apple pie. You could have been an astronaut or kiss your uncle like, mm. an antelope would not exist and ape would be unknown. You never hear a person say afraid or all alone. Uh, the A's in avocado would completely disappear, and certain words would be forgot, like ankle, arm, and ear. Without the A, you couldn't aim an arrow in the air. You wouldn't ask for uppercuts or almonds at the fair. A ruben in Australia would be missing from a map. You never used an ATM or apron or an app. The Arctic fox and aardvark would be absent from the zoo, and vowels, as you know them, would be E I O N U. They wouldn't be an A chord on the instrument you play. Let's appreciate Amaya and applaud the letter A. <laughs> Come on, come on. She can come up. The board said she would like a picture. Can we let her come? She can't really shake. Yeah. <laughs> that was so good. Oh my
Let me just point out at this point, I think it's Ms. Jenkins, the parent, um, uh, your, the, your mother is here, is she not? She's, yes. Great Can job, you just Mom. stand for me, please? Yay. And stay, stay there. And your, and your daughter, uh, if, if she would stand. You have other family members? Well, yeah, this is my daughter. Okay. Um, my daughter. And this is our neighbor. This is our neighbor. Okay. okay. And you. she goes to um, OCPS AIDS. Okay, and you attended every one of our meetings when we were considering looking at building AIDS. And we want to thank you <laughs> from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you. And I know you see, I, I just want to take a point of personal privilege. Is Dr. Kathy Shula in the house? She's, I know I saw her early. Will you just stand? <laughs> I just want her to stand. I want her to stand. And, and um, Dr. Lawson, Dr. Jenkins, but Carol McGowan is not. Just stand for a minute because Dr. Jenkins, um, I, you too. And, and, and let me tell you why I'm doing this. Because this parent stuck with us the entire time when we were trying to put that school together. And regardless what was being said, what was not being said. And Carol McGowan, we sat up in Dr. Jenkins' office figuring, well, how are we going to do this? How can we get our kids to read with fluency and to present oral presentation and to act out and pronounce words and perform? I think they have just gone above and beyond in this case, Dr. Bixler, because Dr. Jenkins said in that room, she, she didn't waver. She didn't argue that we couldn't do it. And Dr. Shula had 1,200 students. And I want you to know, most of them are on the path, like Nathalia Jenkins. We love you, and we thank you. And let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> thank you, Dr. Jenkins. Okay. Wow. OK. Uh, we have another proclamation. Uh, this one is uh, a, an important one. This is um, the district's commitment to end student use of all tobacco products, including e-cigarettes. And to present the proclamation, we have Brenda Christopher Munch. Thank you. Dr. Gordon, school board members, Dr. Jenkins, this proclamation addresses the district's commitment to end student use of all tobacco products. Whereas, after decades of decline in cigarette smoking rates, we have seen a dramatic rise in the use of e-cigarettes by children and teens, leading to a new generation of youthful users addicted to tobacco and nic nicotine. And whereas, 90% of smokers first try a tobacco product before age 18. And whereas, there are now over 5 million students using e-cigarettes and vaping products, and the tobacco industry, including the e-cigarette companies, spend billions annually marketing their deadly and addictive products. And whereas e-cigarette companies advertise and sell products that include flavors that are appealing to youth and can contain levels of nicotine comparable to or even higher than traditional cigarettes. And whereas the short-term and long-term health risks of vaping e-cigarettes are mostly unknown and recently have been linked to multiple deaths, and hundreds of cases of serious respiratory illnesses. And whereas we support an expanded effort by the American Heart Association to educate and raise awareness of this growing health crisis among our youth and their efforts to end all tobacco and nicotine addiction in the United States. And whereas in 2016, the school board of Orange County included anti-vaping language in the code of student conduct and accompanying video messaging. Now, therefore, be it resolved, we call on our entire community to support efforts to end all this, all use of tobacco products, including the use of e-cigarettes by teens, and assuring our youth are tobacco and nicotine free. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. We all understand the significance of vaping and e-cigarettes and the challenge um, we have to work together as a community. I know as a parent, it's hard to do with just two kids and, and to monitor, and it's hard in our schools too. But uh, I appreciate that. Working together, we can make an impact. Uh, our third proclamation is another important one. This deals with um, Jan proclaiming January as um, Mentoring Month in Orange County Schools. And um, 
I was recently at a movie uh, called Resilience, where they talked about one of the main factors that helps our children is making sure that they have an adult in their lives. And so this is uh, very important, and I would like to bring Dr. Todd Trimble up to talk about uh, Mentoring Month. Thank you, uh, Dr. Gordon, school board members, uh, Dr. Jenkins, thank you. Uh, our goal is to recruit, train, and retain 1,000 mentors by the end of this month by hosting and participating in several upcoming events, and a few of those are hosting a mentor recruiting table in the lobby of this very building tomorrow and for the rest of the week, and many of you probably received flyers as you walked in. Uh, participating in, uh, in the annual Martin Luther King Jr. parades in both Orlando and Eatonville and recruiting mentors, and then attending the January Parent Academy sponsored by OCPS to mentor, uh, to recruit mentors. Uh, as of today, the latest numbers, we have 802 uh, mentors. Uh, that is comparison to 427 last year. So we're well on our goal to reaching 1,000. So uh, now for the proclamation. <clears throat> Whereas we honor caring adult mentors who support young people by showing up for them every day and demonstrating their commitment to helping them thrive. And whereas mentor programs like Find Your Voice, Generation Wow, Latinos in Action, My Brother's Keeper, and other mentoring opportunities make our community stronger. And whereas quality mentoring promotes healthy relationships, valuable communication, positive self-esteem, and growth of young people, and whereas quality mentoring programs are proven to build relationships to help improve school attendance and academic achievement, promote responsible decision-making, and provide skills to better navigate relationships at school, socially and at home, and whereas research shows that young people matched with a caring adult through a quality mentoring program are 52% less likely to skip school, 46% less likely to use illegal drugs, 27% less likely to start drinking, more likely to have positive relationship with adults and positive plans for their futures, and whereas 81% of mentees are likely to participate in sports and extracurricular activities, and whereas 55% of students with mentors are more likely to enroll in college than those who did not have one, and whereas January is National Mentoring Month and OCPS is proud to step forward as a leader in reinforcing support for this cause to connect youths with trusted mentors in their lives. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Orange County Public Schools does hereby proclaim January 2020 as Mentoring Month and urges teachers, staff members, and other OCPS adults to take part in this powerful movement that is changing lives. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so very much. I would like to take this moment again to really just thank Ms. Christine Taylor, Dr. Bixler. I would like to thank Brenda for coming in. We really appreciate you, Ms. Bunch, because you notice every time you turn on the television, there's something, another life loss. So we really thank you for pushing this effort. And I'm sure, I we will assure you as a board, it will make a difference. And then, of course, Dr. Trimble, we just thank you from the bottom of our heart for bringing in the mentoring program and all those that work with our mentoring program um, that we have here at OCPS, one of the finest in the United States. Out of all the Council of Great City Schools, we are recognized as one of the, one, some, one of the best mentoring program in the United States. So thank you. Dr. Castadental for helping us to celebrate those proclamations. Board members, at this time, we've already been updated on our strategic plan, so there's no written report tonight. So therefore, Dr. Jenkins, do we have any newly appointed administrators? We have three. I'd like to introduce Lois Gonzalez Cartagena, instructional Oak Ridge High School coach to new assistant principal at Oak Ridge High School. 
Good evening. Um, thank you, school board members, um, staff, and Superintendent Jenkins for this opportunity and privilege to serve at Oak Ridge High School. Thank you. Ms. Lynch, Michelle Plank you? will be moving from Dean sorry. at Stone Lake Elementary to Assistant Principal at Stone Lakes Elementary. Thank you. Thank you, school board members, Superintendent Jenkins, um, staff, for the opportunity to serve at Stone Lakes Elementary. I would also like to thank our men my mentors that have really been with me throughout the way, and that's um, Dr. Rollins, Ms. Kathy Long, Dr. Kennerly, um, the Innovation Office, Mr. Wright. We also have some administrators from schools close by that I would like to thank Mr. Scott, Ms. Davis, um, some family members that came, friends, but most importantly, um, the heart and soul, my husband Brad, Landon, Logan, Lily, and again, family and friends. I thank you. Would you pass that microphone back to Luz? I think she wanted yes. to introduce her yes, family that's as well. What I was saying. She was a I'm little, little quick on the thank trigger you, there. Dr. Sorry Jim. about thank that. Thank you for the opportunity. Yes. Um, I, I would like to thank my number one supporters. That's my family, my husband Eric, my daughters Lexirelis, Aracelis, my son Eric, my mentor Jennifer Bellinger, and my co workers from Oak Ridge High School. Thank you. All right. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Jimmy. Yeah, it would have, would have been hard at home tonight if we hadn't come. Well, Dr. Jenkins, I know you like to move this quickly, you know, since that's your area of expertise with the administrators, but I thought that was a little bit too fast. I said, you mean to tell me she told them don't say nothing but their name? <laughs> I thought maybe those were just strangers she was sitting next to. <laughs> Thank you to all of the families that are here to support our new administrator. Danielle Brincato. Acting Assistant Principal to new Assistant Principal at Weatherby Elementary. Thank you, school board members, Superintendent Jenkins, and staff for the opportunity to serve at Weatherby Elementary School. In addition, I would like to thank Ms. Logue, Ms. Brinkman, who is at our school this evening for PTO, and all of the faculty and staff at Weatherby Elementary School for welcoming me, as well as thank my friends and that are here for supporting both the ones that came from Bonneville Elementary School, who will always be in my heart, as well as my family who are here. I have my biggest supporter, my husband, Brian, my sons, Ethan and Dylan, and then my sister-in-law, Kim, who are here as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you so very much. I love that. I know, like I said, Dr. Jenkins be moving this thing. She wants it. But the board members, we love to comment. Sometimes we don't comment. But if there are any board members that would like to comment and you do not know your person, um, the Oprah person, I know Miss Liz, so I thank you for that, Dr. Jenkins. And um, the, I think Stonewall and Weatherby. Okay, board members. You got it. Congratulations. <laughs> and I just want to point out that not only do you have um, administrators and, and people supporting you, but your, your PTO as well. I think that's terrific because that's what makes an incredible school community is all of us coming together, the parents, the teachers, the students, um, to support you and support our school and support our kids. So I just want to say congratulations. Very proud of you. Perfect person for the job. Thank you. Okay, so with that, we will move on. Oh, oh she wants you to leave now. <laughs> <laughs> she really doesn't like you all working late at night. And, she, and Dr. Jenkins, know that you do, so congratulations to everyone. And you may be excused at this time, but I wish you would stay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Jenkins. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs>
Okay, we're ready. Everybody's gone, <laughs> <laughs> except the faithful few here. So we do want the public to know the executive staff is here, and public comments have been made at our 430 meeting. So we will move on. I would like to make the uh, public comment announcement that anyone who would like to address the board on an item on the consent or non-consent agenda may do so by completing the appropriate yellow form at the board table. At the end of the table, you will see Mrs. Deborah McGill, okay? And you could fill out that card to speak. We will call for you to speak when the item you have signed up for comes before the board. Please understand that in accordance with parliamentary procedure, this is your opportunity to testify before the board. It is not a question and answer session, nor is it an opportunity to engage in a debate with any of the board members. Staff will definitely be available to meet with you after you speak. Should you have any questions of concern, and of course, you know if you are in any one of our district, we will always like to speak with you. Board members are always available through email. We're available through text, our regular telephone, and even after the board meeting tonight to discuss issues of concern one-on-one -on -one with you. You will have at least three minutes to address the board. So if you have any schedule constraints, uh, constraints, constraints, I'm sorry, and if you filled out one of these yellow cards with Miss Deborah McGill at the end of the table, please go and let her know, and we will try to accommodate you through our general counsel. She will call you um, to get you in and out as quickly as you can. Also, you may notice board members looking down and writing during the meeting. This is because they have a monitor in front of them so they can see what is on the large our overhead screen. Now, you already know for those that came in late that the chair had to leave, Chair Jacobs and Chair Gould, because of an incident that happened in the death of a student, a band member. So they really needed to be there. So if you do want to address the chair, please see the superintendent. And the superintendent or Ms. Deborah McGill will definitely get the information to the chair. At this time, we do not have a public hearing. So, Dr. Jenkins, are there any changes to the agenda? Madam Chair, there are two changes. Item 1802 and, and 1902 are withdrawn until a later time. Okay, hearing that those two items have been withdrawn, we find the chair find cause to amend the agenda as requested. Is there a motion? Motion is made by Board Member Castadeno. Do I have a second? Second by Board Member Boyd. I mean, B Boyd, Melissa Bird. So sorry about that. Before we take action on the amended agenda, we have several speakers. Did they, are these, these the speakers or we have none to our general counsel? Okay, hearing none, if, if you're in favor of the, uh, the adoption of the agenda, may I hear it by aye, signs by, and nay? All right, the ayes have it. Okay, seeing that there are no members of the public, we've already moved on. We are going to ask that our consent agenda has already been approved, and we've announced both of the motion makers and the second. At this time, emergency item, did we miss one? Just a point of clarification. You approved the amended agenda. So yeah, I'm sorry, the amended agenda, my bad. Now you need to vote on the agenda itself. Oh, thank you for helping me by that. There it is. Okay. Call for a motion to approve the consent agenda. Okay, it is moved by board member Castadento. Is there a second? And second by, let me get it right, Melissa Bird. <laughs> Got it written wrong. Thank you so very much. Okay, all those in favor of approving the agenda signify by saying aye. aye. Opposing, nays. The motion is carried. And let the vote reflect that all are in favor except the two that's not present at this particular time. Okay, we're going to recess the regular meeting of the Orange County School and call to order the meeting of the Orange County School Board Leasing Corporation. And do we have that tonight? I did not see it on the, um, Dr. Jenkins, I didn't see that one on the, it moved down to non-consent. Okay. 
All right, so do we have speakers speaking on it? No. Mr. Kelly. He's sitting back there. There he is in the back. He always sit back there. Why do you sit back there? <laughs> you, you need to be up front. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, at this point in time, you just need to, uh, you know, you, you, you re recess the uh, re regular meeting and you, uh, and you, I just and you call to order the meeting of the leasing corp. Right. And your I, first action. I did that. Oh, you did that. Okay. And we were waiting on you because and the first the, action is. Go ahead and cover the action. The approval of the minutes. Yes. The first action is to approve the minutes from the November 12th meeting. So all you have to do is ask for a motion and then the rest of the board. Okay. I thought you were going to read portions of it or summarize it or tell us something about no. it. No. Okay, then. All right, I'm going to ask board members for a motion to approve the minutes of the Orange County Board Leasing Corporation. I thought he was going to tell us if it was supposed to be dated November the 12th, 2019, that the board met in session to discuss our leasing cooperation. And if I can get a motion on that. Board Member Gallum, thank you. Uh, is the motion maker? Is there a second? All right, and Joanna. Lopez, thank you so much, is the seconder. All those in favor of approving the minutes signify by saying aye. aye. Okay, and opposes nay. The motion is carried in the vote. Mr. Kelly, thank you so very much. Next. There, the there's next. another item next, yes. Right. The next item is the approval of a resolution. This resolution is authorizing the extension of the index floating rate period for the series 2008B certificates for renewal period of approximately three years and authorizing the execution of related documents in connection therewith, including amended and restated schedule 200A slash B, a third amendment to continuing covenants agreement and a second amendment to the amended and restated series 2008B supplemental trust agreement. I need a motion. Okay, Colbert, board member Colbert is the motion maker. Second is Castadental. All those in favor of approving the minutes signify by saying aye. aye. Opposing sign, nay. The ayes have it and the motion is carried. With no further business coming before the board to address the board, I'm adjourning the meeting of the Orange County School Board. Leasing, don't leave that podium until I adjourn. <laughs> they can see you walking away. <laughs> I love you, Dale, you know I'm having fun. But no further business coming before this board. I'm adjourning the meeting of the Orange County School Board Leasing Cooperation and reconvening the regular meeting of the Orange County School Board. Thank you so very much, Mr. Dale Kelly, for your fine work and making sure that our leasing cooperation is stable. Thank you. All righty. With no further business to address, I'm adjourning the meeting and then we are going back. So, Dr. Jenkins. We're going to hear from you, information. Very quickly, as we still have an executive session, I wanted to make you aware, I know um, several board members have questioned whether or not we were preparing for some of our citizens that may be coming to us from Puerto Rico after the earthquake. Uh, tomorrow there will be a meeting convened here with United Way, Heart of Central Florida, United Way, to make sure we are coordinated in our efforts. We are making every preparation to do what we did the last time. Uh, we had folks available at the airport, at reception centers, if we have large contingencies of our citizens coming to us from Puerto Rico, we are going to be prepared and assisting them just as we did after the last catastrophe. Secondly, certainly want to acknowledge so many of our teachers and staff and board members who were in Tallahassee on yesterday to advocate on behalf of public education and funding. We are very hopeful that uh, our governor's proposal to invest significant dollars in public education will come to fruition during this legislative session. And so uh, kudos, commendations to all of those who took part in Tallahassee on yesterday. Madam Chair, that's that's it for now. I want Very to good. Wonderful our time. Wonderful report. Thank you. And I know that you will keep us informed and let us know when we are to meet with you on that. At this particular time, our general counsel, Endo, is going to give us her report. I actually do not have anything for you. 
Except for we are, we are meeting in an executive session. Oh, that's your uh, report. That, that's my report. I love it. Thank you so very much. And at this particular time, school board committee reports will come in this order. It will be budget, cast the dental, communications. Um, I think Pam already told us hers is she had one comment, and I don't know if she gave it to Ms. Colbert. She probably forgot she was going to do that. <laughs> Though anyone that works on that communication committee can give us a comment, and if not, we can pass that for the next meeting. Our community action is hers also. I don't think they may have had one for this because it would be in our board package, and definitely are very busy as our legislative chair, Angie Gallo. And then we're going to ask that we have comments from Casta Dental, um, uh, Joanna, okay, we would do uh, Joanna Lopez, myself, and any others that would like to make comments about yesterday. All righty, so here we go. Uh, I don't have any mem uh, okay. issues or updates on the budget other than what we are planning for our next uh, budget overview with the superintendent. So that is it for the budget committee. So at this particular time, Ms. Gallo, legislative. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I don't have anything um, new to report other than the session did begin today. So it is 60 days and will end on March 14th. So we'll be paying close attention and have more updates in the future. Okay, and I think that uh, Dr. Jenkins has been on this agenda that the thanks to our general counsel, you all have been approved to go to Tallahassee and fight the good fight for us February 22nd, 23rd, 24th. Yes. Please talk about that for just a moment. Yes, so we, um, there's several. Myself, I have Johanna, are you, Johanna, are you going next week? Five of us. Yes. And five of us will be attending and heading to Tallahassee next week. We arrive, some of us arrive Tuesday night, others on Wednesday, and we'll be there Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Um, uh, meeting with the FSC, FSBA, talking about our legislative um, duties, meeting with legislators, talking about the needs of the district, <laughs> and um, how to adequately support and fund public education. So we're really looking forward to that. And we're looking forward to you all representing us extremely well because you will be working with all of the school board members, representative from the state of Florida. I want you to know yours truly will not be there because I went on the bus yesterday and I will not go back again until it gets dangerous. So um, I want Dr. Um, Mrs. <laughs> McGill to reflect, to take my name off the list for this particular session and I will be going to the others. And remember, this is only the legislative session, which is one of the most important session that we definitely have in Tallahassee. Okay, at this time, comments from the rally on yesterday, okay. No, let her speak last, because she was a star. <laughs> right. Uh, well, thank you, Chair Gordon. Um, well, I just wanted to, before we end the meeting, just talk about the rally. Uh, we've been asking teachers to turn their, their focus to Tallahassee, the ones who appropriate the dollars and mandate compliance um, that so often tie our hands. And yesterday, they did. So Member Lopez and Dr. Gordon and I, we joined thousands of teachers from across the state in the Capitol yesterday, and I was so proud to see so many from OCPS. Um, some were there were a little nervous. They didn't know what, if they were gonna get in trouble, or, so I was really proud of them for being so brave. But um, I want you to know those teachers took a personal day not to go to the beach, but to drive up or ride a bus four hours each way um, to show overwhelming support for public education. Uh, they want fair pay, of course, but what they were fighting for was so much bigger um, they went to fight for smaller class sizes. They wanted to stop pledging allegiance to testing companies. They went to call out the diverting of public funds away from, um, from funding our voucher schools and, um, and charter schools. They went to stand up for our kids. And I went because teachers shouldn't be the only ones sticking their necks out and putting their jobs on the line to defend what is outlined in our Constitution as a paramount duty of the state. Um, and I wanna thank the brave teachers who wore red for Ed and marched at the Capitol. <laughs> I wanna thank the teachers who wore red for Ed in solidarity at schools. And I wanna thank the principals who encouraged their teachers to go. 
and the parents who sent their kids to school in red, and those who joined us arm in arm. And finally, uh, I want to thank CTA. Uh, the CTA organized a seamless rally um, with great speakers, and they were there for your teachers when they had doubts. If there are any teachers listening right now who are not members of the CTA, I am encouraging you to join today because they are the one organization um, that is not afraid to step up and defend what so many take for granted, and that's our education. So um, it, we are stronger with the support of teachers. So it was a great rally. I'm glad I went. Okay. Oh, Ms. Colbert. Just a quick comment to express my pride and joy for all of the teachers who took their day yesterday to go out and, and fight for what's right, and especially the teachers that included Dr. Castor Dental, Dr. Gordon, and Member Lopez, all teachers who sit on our board and stood shoulder to shoulder with all of our teachers. You have our undivided support in going up there and, and standing together um, to fight for what's right and know that there are five board members who will go again next week and um, we will be meeting with legislators um, and people from the Department of Education and know that the number one priority uh, the le on the legislative platform for Orange County Public Schools and for the entire Florida School Boards Association is salaries for teachers. That is our united number one priority that we will be fighting for this week, next week, and every week during session until it comes to fruition. So, and uh, again, so proud of all of you teachers up here who stood alongside all of our OCPS and the Florida teachers. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I feel very proud of, of the teachers, the supporters, the community. Um, I had the opportunity to speak at from a uh, thousand of, of teachers, um, but I just communicate the way my community feel, the way the teachers um, feel, my experience as a teacher, and how when I became school board member, I have um, my hands tied because our hands, all of our school board members feel the same way. We, we feel that they deserve more, but we don't have m more money to give them. So um, I just express to them that um, we have to to ask for more money, and if they don't give us money, so we have to vote for other candidates that support public education. I think that um, public education deserves to be respect, and the only way that we can deserve, that we can earn that respect is by getting more money um, in our schools to raise our salaries. We have bus drivers, we have secretaries, we have cafeteria um, staff members, we have janitors and teachers that deserve more, um, better salary, more money. And I also have a questions in regards to um, Puerto Rico. Uh, you know that the situation with the earthquake is is something that um, is breaking our hearts, not only to the Puerto Rican community, but with for everybody. Um, I think that I, I have now. I my country is um, living a very challenging situation by living outside of their homes because they feel fears. And the majority of the death now is because of heart attacks. They, they just afraid of what is gonna happen tomorrow. So my question is in reference to the families that are gonna move because I believe that we're gonna have that mobilization from Puerto Rico. Do we have the same, um, the same, um, uh, not benefit, let's, um, the same, the same um, protocol with transcript, with registration, with uh, do they have do they have that opportunity? Because during Maria, the Hurricane Maria, we have the opportunity to not show anything because the school were closed, and now we are facing the same situation. Every school is closed, so they're not gonna have transcript. 
So how is going to work with the transcript when they want to um, register in any of the schools? Dr. Jenkins, they've been talking about it on national news. I, I know you've been in contact with Council of Great City School on this. Do you have a, anything that you can share with board members? Absolutely. Uh, Member Lopez, and M Madam Chair, we have the same provisions in place. We just need those families when they get here, bring us their children. We will get them registered and in school. We can take care of the particulars later. Our first priority will be to take care of those children so parents don't have to worry about that. Just bring them to us. The main side will be the airport? or is So there's not been an official declaration by county government and others on setting up a reception center. We expect that will be the case. We're going to have a meeting tomorrow um, and try to have some of that coordinated. I can promise you we will, again, have staff available, have a table, a booth set up at the airport if that provision is made. Otherwise, we will um, set up our own reception here for students to get registered right away. Do, did we send any type of information to the school in reference to emotional, um, you know, situation, mental health in, during this situation is also uh, something that we have to take care of? It. So, you know, the, I'm sorry, Madam Chair. Yes, go ahead. So, you know, the um, last tragedy is just so fresh on our heels. We made all of those provisions and got that information out to schools. We'll certainly do the same again so that we're prepared to accommodate our citizens and, and, and their children coming to us. Be aware of the situation. Yes, and I know that the I know that our superintendent has been in touch. You didn't mention it, but you've been in touch with the county mayor. And in reference to, uh, you know, how when they come in and also the airport authority, um, um, we ran into on Friday night, Car Carolyn Fennell, and she was talking with uh, Jerry, Mem Jerry Demons, and I think um, Mayor Dyer also. So the mayors are getting involved, and then um, <coughs> I'm sure we'll get our instructions from them, but it will be, as, as Dr. Jenkins is saying, I know they've been on it because people have been calling. And I'm so glad that you brought that up. I think other members at the board had a comment on it. Okay, I think um, Mrs. Colby, did you have a comment? And that's <laughs> okay. So Angie, okay, board member Gallo. Um, th thank you, Madam Chair. So I just have a quick question, then I do want to make a comment on the rally. Um, it, when Maria struck, I think there was an executive order or something that came down from the governor where we were allowed to graduate students from Puerto Rico with a Puerto Rico diploma. Will that still be the case or will that be, have to be something that will need to be readdressed? Did that expire? Madam Superintendent. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm not just going to talk right past the chair because then she would call me on it. So... So, uh, Member Gallo, you are absolutely correct. It did take um, direction from the governor's office and from the commissioner's office. We suspect there will be similar direction this year. We've not received it to date. Uh, we're going to be tracking how many students uh, come to us with those kinds of issues involved, and we will make every provision uh, allowed by law uh, outside of that uh, separate declaration. But I suspect there will be something coming to us from Tallahassee as well. Thank you. And board members, I'm so glad that you did that because um, this is very, very important. And I know we'll be working very closely with our general counsel, um, Ms. Zendo, in reference to this. Are there any other concerns at this moment that any board member would like to agenda as a poly, policy level issue item that we can discuss at a future date or a future work session? Now, ladies, listen. Y'all listen. We are going to discuss it at a later date. All we need is your topic, all right? Not the dissertation, just the topic. And then we will pass it on to the superintendent, and then we could amend it. We'll clarify it. We'll get our legislative priorities on it. We'll get the general counsel working. We'll see if this is a major concern that all board members would like to tackle as a priority because it may not be our number one. It may be our number two. Okay, so keep that in mind, Dr. Jenkins. I apologize, Madam Chair, members of the board. I neglected in my comments to mention Ron Pollard uh, and gonna, OSPA were present yesterday I, I as gonna well. I was going to close out with joy. I was going to close out. Yes, they were. They were present yesterday. I was right there with him, hand in hand, with the reverend, with all the reverends that were there. He was there. Thank you, Dr. Jenkins. I got it noted here, so I'm just clearing it up so we could um, get on up. Member, board member Gallo. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, first off, I, I do want to, um, 
off, also offer my um, sentiments about yesterday. I, I so appreciate that the members, that, that Dr. Gordon and Dr. Castro Dental and Member Lopez were able to join the rally. Um, I watched it for, on TV. I couldn't be there. And I was just in awe of the amount of teachers that showed up in solidarity. And I want to echo what Member Cobert said about um, this is just the beginning. It did. I think yesterday truly set the tone from what we expect, what we, what we hope will come out of this legislative session. And we will be up there. And we, those of us who couldn't be alongside you tomorrow will be there next week and the week after and the week after and the week after fighting for, for teacher pay, for higher salaries, for an investment in public education to make sure that our veteran teachers aren't left behind and that we do have compression. Um, so thank you to all of our teachers that took time out of their day and traveled a long ways. It's four hours to be up there. We so appreciate it. We so appreciate you. And we look forward to standing with you in this fight. Um, and then for my priorities. Um, in light of there not being a policy on what we do when we don't have a, a chair or a vice chair, I would, I, I think we, we do need a policy to that end, and we really need to resurrect the policy committee that is is in policy, but as I have not seen since being on the board, and I'd like to nominate Melissa Bird <laughs> to chair that committee. <laughs> Madam Chair. Madam Superintendent. So in the absence of the chair, um, let me tell you why there is not a policy committee. It is because the entire board wanted to be engaged in policy discussions. So rather than yeah. having a small committee, the entire board wanted to be included, engaged in discussions around policy. Uh, is that Madam th Superintendent for that comment. Madam, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, sup um, Dr. Jenkins, is that possibly something that Melissa Bird can share? <laughs> Remember, we chair have for the. Now, I'm looking to find her a chair position. <laughs> that she can, wait a minute, ladies. Now hold on. Wait one minute. We're not gonna get out of control here. Okay. This, let me read this again. This is just a nice little topic to add policy level issues. Okay. Poor discussion, not discussion, because you all know that I'm a stickler about committees. And the reason why I'm a stickler about committees, because if you follow the committees, then I'm going to ask that the committee bring it back to a work session. So you better thank God that we have a committee that we don't have to bring everything back to a work session. That's the way we operate it. Because when you branch off into a committee, I think the superintendent explained it well. Um, we had one chair. She would not allow any of us to be on anything, we were all on every committee. Everybody was legislative. Everybody was, uh, whatever the committee was, communications, and that way you didn't have a few people making decisions and not ever bringing it back to the board and then bringing it to the table and getting it approved. So be very careful what you ask for because there will be other policies proceeding, all right? Okay, and be careful appointing chairs because our suggestions should personally the, uh, it, that is a chairman's uh, prerogative, and I don't want her to think that I'm holding her meeting and allowing you all to do that, to recommend chairs without her being present. I suggest that you see the superintendent, and I'm giving you words of wisdom, ladies. I suggest that you see the superintendent and the chair, but let's not do that because I may want to handle that committee since I'm an expert on that committee. I'm the one with the policy. I'm, I'm, I'm the one trained with policies, okay? So I mean, and we are all getting trained. So I think we, we don't wanna carry it that far. Now, are we all satisfied, are our hearts satisfied about the policy level issues that you have brought before the board? I don't wanna leave here and you don't get your heart desire. <coughs> Cast the dental, board member. Thank you, Madam Chair. I would like to bring up again for policy discussion um, at a later date uh, the idea of broadcasting our pre-agenda meetings. And briefly what made me think about that is when I was not at our meeting and I had to participate by watching it live streamed and participate by phone, I didn't have access to the pre-agenda meeting because it was not an audio, it was not video, and it was not broadcast or recorded. So um, to allow me to do my job or anyone else who is not here, uh, I think it's important that we hear what is said and then 
also the public. So um, I'd like to bring that back up. Okay, I want to commend all of you tonight for your wonderful comments and referencing and bringing up board level policy issues that could help improve this board. Are there any others that may come before this board tonight? Okay, hearing none, at this time I will make my comments. Oh. All righty, you, you may be heard at this time. Board Member Lopez. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, about the policy FF for naming and renaming, how are we gonna work with that um, policy? Because I think that the you know the, the in the renaming part of the policy by saying that one of the options is to is gonna be the same name. I I I do not see any logic on that, and and I need more feedback. Or, or can we change it? What can we do? Because, you know, do we agree is that renaming can be the same name as well? Okay, can I do this, um, Dr. Jenkins? May I refer this over to you because we have a wonderful policy on the name change, and can I ask you? to see if you and the chairman could get together and bring that policy before the board and maybe in a work session and let's see what we need to change. That policy is very explicit that we have on naming our schools and we may need to see based on what board member Lopez is stating to us tonight, what we need to adjust and what we need to change. So it can be updated with all of the, because of the Me Too moment and everything happening, all right? And people asking for female and Mm -hmm. and, and and then everybody gonna have some problems, trust me. I don't know anybody that doesn't. So Dr. Jenkins, <laughs> you wanna just comment on that very quickly. Thank you, Madam Chair. So it is on the list of policies to be looked at for revision. Certainly General Counsel will be working with us on that. But in the meantime, wanna reassure Member Lopez that we have, um, the board has, by that current policy, has total authority around naming uh, of schools. Community members and uh, the school can bring up through their grassroots recommendation, but it is the board's authority by your current policy. And so I don't want you to think you have to hold that up uh, until we get the policy revised. We will work with you on that. Okay. So do we have uh, you recognize Joanna Lopez, board sorry. member. Thank you. So um, we can go ahead then during February 4th um, even if we don't revise the policy, or are we going to revise the policy before we have that meeting? Madam Chair. Madam Superintendent. You are not required to revise the policy. Under your current policy, it is the board's authority. We can work with you on that. But I don't uh, discount the fact that we may want to add more detail to that policy for future reference. But uh, in the month of February, I believe our current policy gives us uh, enough leeway to do what we need to do. And, and thank in hearing, you. right, thank you so much, both ladies. And hearing uh, both of the comments coming from the superintendent and board member Lopez, um, I know our general counsel has her work cut out for her because they will bring us information that will help us to see where we need to go with that. Okay, I will give my comments, um, my discussion. I did want to say, Dr. Jenkins did say <laughs> Mr. Pollitt is still in the audience. I didn't know if he had uh, gone and Dr. Jenkins did recognize you for being at the rally in Tally on yesterday. I was very, very proud of you. Yeah, uh, and in the midst of all of the, the board, we went into the auditorium, I call it the, I guess the gymnasium it was, the center, the civic center, which was really an experience to hear all of the speakers that they had. I don't know how many people were able to attend that one, but that was the first thing that we attended and you were there. And it was so good to see you representing your team. And I represented OESPA, and I represented the educational support people <laughs> in, in um, Osceola, and the teachers there in Osceola, as well as all my teachers here in Orange County reminded, we're Orange County. But I did go on the bus, I went on the bus, um, with the Osceola educational support personnel and also with the teachers. And we had a wonderful time. We had one bus, we met up with Miami and Swanee County and Leon County, and we all got together and there were so many friends. But I do wanna thank you for being there. We were well represented at the rally in Tally and like they stated, Dr. Castadeno, but our dynamic rally speaker just made us so proud, being one of us as a former teacher 
and also a board member along with um, uh, Reverend Golden, who is a board member and, um, and one of the ministers with the AME Church. Um, it was really, truly a treat to see her on this stage where board member Gal I mean Lopez just made us so proud. People were just coming away from the rally just saying how excited that they was. Um, I enjoyed myself. I fellowship with teachers I had met back in 1967. The one that I really saw I met back in 1967 that tore my heart up was Ulysses Floyd. Ulysses Floyd was standing there on every scene holding the flag, still fighting for teachers. Wendy Dormer was there, along with my president from Osceola County, April. They were all there. All of the presidents were there supporting our teachers. And for all of the speakers that got up to speak in behalf, I just thought that that was awesome. So I want to say hats off to you, Joanna Lopez, for representing us well. And, and just doing a great job there, Castaneda, for you being there. Our senators and representatives were in the crowd with us. I did have an opportunity to meet Mr. Crump. I walked hand in hand with him in the parade. I was right up front there uh, with the Miami-Dade group and also had an opportunity to see and talk with uh, Reverend Al Sharpton again. I was about three people behind him and I was two people behind cast the, uh, behind uh, board member Lopez, but she was big dog, so she never looked back to see me back there. But I saw her little red hair just bouncing up and down and we were very, very proud of her. I, don't, I do want to say after the rally, we, we did board our buses and um, we were all, um, everybody from what I understood returned home safely. There is a video, we will send it to the superintendent for those that may want to hear uh, Mrs. Lopez's speech and all of the other speeches. There was no Democrats and Republicans and independents. It was people up there, they were Republican, everybody had their own political agenda, but yet we were all there for one cause, public education of our children and seeing to it that they get a good public education, but we were all, as Cassidy just said, united in one love. So after that, I had to get on the bus and catch up with Dr. Ambrusta, because uh, Dr. Ambrusta was running my community meeting last night, and I thanked him from the bottom of my heart, and, and they were there, they were all excited, and uh, Jasma, Lambert sent me pictures and the people were looking sad. And I said, that can't be because Dr. Michael Ambrose is always happy. She said, Gordon, I didn't send you the happy pictures. I just took that one at the beginning. So they were a little sad in the beginning. I'll show you the picture, Dr. Michael Ambrose. But I thank Mr. Morris, Dr. Jenkins, the director of facilities, um, uh, Jasmine Lambert, for a wonderful meeting on last evening while I was on the bus. The whole bus pretty much heard that public meeting. I turned the telephone up and put it on the bus speaker. And they saw the renovation, Dr. Jenkins, of Orlando Orange Technical College at Orlando, right here in this building. They were excited that we we're going to get a new building. The architect was there. I think it was the architect. He showed them. It couldn't show the design now. You know, we get our own little design. But he showed them what could be done. Dr. Jenkins, they did something that was unusual. They got everybody involved in it. Dr. Ambru, can I just do point of person to person and just ask you to tell the little come up and tell that little exercise that they did. We didn't have a camera, we wish we did. But let, let me tell you what I like in your community meeting. They got them involved and in how I got, and I'm just saying this, all of my schools are totally different in District 5. And that's because we just didn't hold the meeting, we ran the meeting. Our people told, we don't want this, we want rugs, we want it sitting back, we want a queuing session. But I, we were so impressed, they said, what they're doing, what they're doing? You all got up and did a, a little session. Can you briefly explain to other board members what happened there? Because from that session, they left early and it was just incredible. Go right ahead. They, they just, uh, th thank you, uh, Madam Chair, board members. What they did is they had a variety of different pictures, and those pictures could be anything from a strawberry to a um, one of those things you blow on and the little things fly off into the distance. And they had to look at the pictures and try to grasp what they wanted to feel 
in the building and so they used those pictures and then they each got up they were probably what 15 to 18 that got up and shared that you know this is the picture i like and and i want to feel like this is going to happen some it might have been the horizon one man got up and said this is a picture of uh the the horizon and it's a long way but you just take one step at a time and i want to be able to come in here and take one step to my future and so it was all about the heart and the feeling of what they want to feel in the building and it really worked out uh they were very impressive what the community members said they were very impressed. I said, did he leave the meeting? She said, you stayed to the whole meeting. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am, so, I was the last one. Up. I know you had to go, but listen, I thank you so much. I have to give you a hand because of all of the meetings I've been in, and all of them have been excellent. This was one of the most innovative meeting that, so don't take board members, please do not take your building policies. That is when your community, you don't have to go and sit in that meeting and listen to an architect. They are getting paid millions of dollars. You have to lead it and direct it. That is the only power we have because Dr. Jenkins is in charge of the operation of the school and getting what programs they want. But we do have some questions that did come up because they are concerned about how they're going to get to where they need to go when they move those programs. Okay, so that, that is one call that I did receive, and I think we had Jessma Lambert to share that with you. Mm -hmm. So we got to work out those details. But you, I just have to say hats off to you and Dr. Jenkins. You all un put this thing together so I don't have to say anything. Thank you so very much. Thank you. All righty, and thank you, Mr. Pollitt, for being there with your wonderful team. Okay, ladies, all hearts are satisfied. Okay, any other comments? Madam Superintendent, General Counsel? I just wanted to make sure you're ready for your executive session. Oh, you honey, have a I script. got it. Y'all wrote this script okay, up, and I'm going to read you. it verbatim. Okay, all right, so we got everything together. We have our agenda policies, and I know Teresa didn't want to leave, and nor did Pam Gould, but she's going to be shocked when she see all those policies that you all have given her to work out and work session, but we will do it. Hearing this, pursuit to section 286.0118, Florida statute, the school board of Orange County, Florida will meet in an executive session to discuss the pending litigation of JP versus Orange County School Board, case number 2019-CA009681-0. The statute requires us to open the meeting in the public and then adjourn to our closed executive session. It is estimated that this attorney-client session will take approximately 60 minutes. Those attending will be Angie Gallo, school board member, Joanna Lopez, school board member, Linda Colbert, school board member, Kat Gordon, school board member, Karen Castadental, school board member, Melissa Bird, school board member, Dr. Barbara Jenkins, superintendent, Amy Enville, school board's general counsel, Philip Mooring, attorney, outside counsel, and we will have a co-reporter. Once the executive session is over, we will reconvene the public meeting by opening the door and with no further business coming before the board, we will conclude the public meeting. I would like to thank you all for attending this regular school board meeting. We will now adjourn to conference room E for the executive session. At this time, it is 6.54, meeting adjourned.